Hey Floss Tube, this is Brian. Welcome back. This is my 21st Floss Tube video, and it will be an update of my cross stitching for October 2017, as well as a little bit of November. Uh, first of all, I want to welcome you back and thank you for all of your comments, for liking and subscribing to my channel. I really appreciate all of your all of your input and all of your questions. If you are here for the first time, welcome. I hope that you enjoy the things that I have to, to show, share with you today. If you are returning, uh, welcome. Uh, thanks for deciding to, to stick with me and, and continuing to watch my, watch my videos. Uh, no, October and November has been a pretty good month cross stitch wise. I, I've accomplished quite a bit and I'm going to be, I'm excited to share with you some of the things that I have, I have been able to do. Uh, but first of all, I want to respond to a couple of comments that were left uh, on my channel since my last video. Um, first of all, Stephanie at Lindy Stitches uh, asked me how I stitch two-handed with a hoop. I mentioned that I had been uh, out, of, out of the country on business and that I was uh, cross-stitching with a hoop and I'd figured out how to, how to stitch two-handed, but that it was kind of awkward. So I, I'm going to try to demonstrate this. So this is the hoop that I used. It's uh, one of those spring hoops. I really like it because it gives me really good tension. I can get as good tension on this, maybe even better than on my scroll frame. But I don't like it because I have to hold it. So um, let me see if I can do this. Basically, the way I was, um, the way that I was stitching two-handed with this is I held it up against my body. And this is a little bit higher than I than I did, but I just want it on the video. So I'd hold it up like this, and I stitch two-handed. So I go, and with this hand, I stitch down. So I stick the needle in the fabric in the hole where I wanted to go. Then I'd switch hands, pull it through like this, and then stick it up, hold it, switch hands, pull it through. So it was like completely, uh, that's how I was stitching two-handed. And it worked for a little bit, but it got a little bit tiresome. It'd be great to have something that would hold this for me so that I could stitch two-handed. But that's how I did it. Um, VerPR asked me if I had ever stitched kits with the diagonal method. She was wondering if there would be enough floss to be able to do that. And no, I've never actually stitched a kit uh, with my diagonal method. So I don't know. I would be really conservative with my floss if I did um, be, just because quite I started a couple of kits but I have never finished a kit so I don't even have a feel uh, for how much I, I don't even have a feel for if uh, how much floss is left over if I stitch from a kit so I really don't have a, a good feel for that um, a stitch too far mentioned that I talked about how uh, my starditis had left, left and, and she, she said she was wondered if starditis is caused by people not liking the pieces they are stitching and I think that's the case. I notice that when I start to get bored if I, or if I start to basically when I get start, start to get bored with the piece that I'm working on, that's when the starditis sticks in, uh, kicks in. Um, you, you know what, what for me starditis is a sign that I think that everything that I'm working on is is dumb and stupid and I'm tired of it and I want to do something else. Uh, so I think that's the case. Uh, uh, Stitch and Mommy asked me if I worked on, uh, I talked about how I'm only doing about two projects a month and she asked me if I plan on, planned on working on them consecutively or alternating them every day. And I just... Um, I like working on one project for a block of time. The idea of, of switching back and forth, that, that doesn't really appeal to me. So uh, my plan is uh, two, two weeks working on one project and two weeks working on the other project. And that really hasn't panned <laughs> out as you'll see uh, when I start showing stuff. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's kind of the way it goes. Um, so anyway, um, the, those are all the questions. Thanks. It feel free to ask me any questions or anything you want. Oh, I'd be glad to 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 answer any questions that you have to the best of my ability. Um, so let's get into my cross stitching. 
First of all, uh, let's, I'm going to show you my stitch turn graph. Here it is. And you'll see that I actually did pretty well. I was able to put in quite a few stitches. That's because most of the time I was working on Andophora screw, uh, which has a lot of negative space. Um, I, the pieces that I'm working on uh, now don't have quite as much negative space, so my stitch count is going to drop, I, I expect. And I haven't included November in this graph just because it's not over with. And so, anyway. I'll also show you this graph because I had another finish. And I am really excited to show you that finish. So you'll see, um, this is my finish trend. You'll see for this year, I now have six finishes, which is a personal record. I don't know if I'll be able to do six finishes next year, um, just because, well, I don't know, but we'll see. But I am really happy with, with all that I've been able to accomplish this year. I have, I have, I'm really kind of happy with, uh, with my progress and the things that I've been able to finish. I don't expect that I will have something in December, so I, I, I'm thinking six is going to be my final number. But it's, uh, I, like I say, I'm, I'm really excited about that. So let's just, let's just get to it. I'm going to show you my finish. So um, I, I worked on, and if you've been following me on Instagram, you already know what you're going to see. But I am, I am so excited with this. I finished and a forest grew. And what happened is I worked on this for two weeks in October. And I worked on Autumn Magic for about a week. And then I decided I wanted to finish this. So I kept, so I got, got it back out. And we'll talk about why I did that with when I get to Autumn Magic. But I'm going to show you it. Here it goes. So this is my finished piece. I have just really enjoyed this. And when I when I finished it, I just I just couldn't stop looking at it. Just the overall all of the shades of green with the pops of color everywhere. I just I just love it. So I just want to I'm going to give you a little bit of a close up and kind of highlight some of my favorite trees. Of course, this is the first tree that I stitched, and that fox was really, really cool. I really like the fox. Um, this willow, I love this willow. This is probably one of my favorite trees. I love this pine tree, too, with the, the contrasting colors. Let's see. I, I seem to be really attracted to diamonds, so all of the trees that are, like, filled out of diamonds, I really like. I like that tree too. Uh, these greens are some of my favorite greens. They're the 500 series. And I just love the gradient. I, I love everything about that tree. Um, let's see, what else? And yeah, everything's falling apart. Yeah, here's another diamond tree. I like this, this tree too with the gradient. I really like the gradient. This tree was fun. Yeah, I like this tree too. That tree was really fun to do. I really like that tree. More diamonds. And I will I will admit this is my least favorite tree. This is the tree I stitched in Norway on the hoop and it is just little itty bitty bits of colors. That one was a real pain to do. So, I as I looked at this, I I just want to point something out. The, I, I, I've looked at this and I have decided that I, I, I've come more and more to the conclusion that this is the, the case. So you have the verse that talks about, uh, the gar about the two trees in the Garden of Eden. And this tree here is, of course, the tree of knowledge of good and evil because it has a, a serpent that's biting an apple. I am, I am pretty confident well, if this is the tree of, of knowledge of good and evil, then I think this is the tree of life. And I really think that because they are in the middle of the, of the forest. Well, they could be up here, but they were pushed down to make room for the, 
for the big tree with the verse. So they're, they're kind of the center. Just the way that they are arranged, I think that's the case. I think those are the two trees. There's one thing I will say about this piece. Um, this, this side, I think when she designed this piece, she started over here and worked over here. And um, I think she finished over here. And I think she ran out of trees. And the reason why I say this is it feels to me like there are a lot more little filler trees over here than there are over here. It's And so, like, things got really repetitive through here because it was like this, it felt like I was stitching the same small tree over and over again. I mean, that's that's a minor quibble. Um, and no, you wouldn't notice that if you hadn't stitched it, but I, I did when I when I got over there. But yeah, see, now I can't even stop looking at it now. I just love it. It's great. So just a couple of uh, statistics. I started this uh, piece in August of 2016, and I finished it in October, the end of October 2017. So it took me about 14 months to stitch, but the number of days that I actually worked on it in those 14 months was 62. I worked on this for 62 days, which means once again, if I had stitched on this constantly, I would have finished it in about two months, which, you know, that's kind of surprising with, for, for the size of it. And that's just one more, uh, one more indication to me that I, that I, that I want to concentrate on, on fewer pieces. I've decided that I like having significant progress on a couple of pieces instead of having minimal progress on a whole bunch of pieces. I like seeing progress. Progress motivates me. So let's talk about, I have two more pieces to show you, two more pieces that I've worked on since my last video that I'm going to show you. Uh, the first piece is, of course, Autumn Magic. I've already mentioned that. Uh, this Autumn Magic is a design that, just for review, it's a design by Randall Spangler. This is what it will look like when it's finished. It's chartered by Heaven and Earth Designs, and I'm stitching it on uh, 32 count, no, sorry, I'm stitching it on 25 count Lugana Antique White. I'm stitching it over one, and I'll show you what it looked like the last time you saw it. And I haven't looked, so I'm kind of guessing as to what I've done since the last time you saw it. Uh, this is what it looks like now. So, I think I finished this page. I, think, I don't think you've seen it with this page finished. So I finished this page, and I started working on this page up here. So this is what it looks like now. I really like, I mean, this was, this was kind of a fun page to stitch. Um, we're seeing more of the, more of the path and more of the wall. There's that finial. Ah, uh, maybe you, maybe you have seen that finished. And I've been working up here and I don't know, this is just blobs of color right now. It doesn't look really exciting. So the reason why I, I decided to put this on hold a little bit is I realized that Heaven and Earth had a max color version of this. And I got looking at it and I, was, I, I started to wonder whether or not um, max colors was what I really wanted to stitch because I was wondering if it would add any more detail to it. And I, so I, I decided to, and whether it would be worth uh, stitching with that m many more colors because you add more colors and you're going to have a lot more confetti. And I, I posted that kind of that question on, on my blog and I had somebody who pointed out that there is a post on Facebook in the Heaven and Earth Designs group. Somebody has stitched 
uh, Stitch in Time. Um, like there's like six different versions of a, of a Stitch in Time, and they they posted a comparison of all of them. And looking at that, it it looks like um, adding more colors doesn't really add that much more detail. Uh, adding um, a larger size seems to add more detail, but adding more colors doesn't. Um, for, for every chart, you kind of have to look at the mock-ups and decide. And for Autumn Magic, I can't really, the only difference I can tell from the mock-ups is the max color design looks a little bit lighter. Um, so I'm going to continue working on, on what I have. I've decided that I'm going to continue doing that. But I, I kind of put that on hold for a while before I decided to do that. So um, I'm going to continue working on Autumn Magic, and I'm excited to do that. Um, the other piece that I've been working on, and sorry, I just dropped something, is uh, my winter sampler. Um, this is a design by Sandy Orton of Cooler Design Studio. This is what it'll look like when it's finished. And I'm stitching this on 28 count tea dyed Monaco. It's just the tube that you buy at Hobby Lobby or um, I might have gotten it at Michael's. I don't remember which which store I got it at. But it's just a, just a, a, a piece of that. Um, I'll insert a picture of what it looked like the last time you saw it, which was actually quite a while ago. And, and this is what it looks like now. So, and this is what I'm talking about. I've been working on this for about three weeks. And I have done quite a bit. I have finished, so this stretch of this diagonal here. So this snowman here. I'm getting a lot of the, the ice skaters here. Um, I've hit this corner and I'm working this way. So my diagonals are getting longer, are getting shorter, I mean. I finished this ribbon that says Happy New Year. That's I finished that last night. So I feel like I've made significant progress on this piece. But it's getting to me. <laughs> so it's gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna I am going to uh, stop working on it for a little while. The reason why it's getting me is this. And it's just so much white. And white is not my favorite color to stitch. And there's just so much of it. I mean, this is just a mass of white with other colors sprinkled in. And so this is this is going to take a little bit of a hiatus. I'm I'm ready to work on something else. So, but I'm I'm so happy with my progress, and it, this just confirms to me once again that I think I like working on one or two projects a month, um, and I like because I like seeing a lot more progress. So, those are all the cross stitches. Those are all, all the pieces that I had to show you. That's all. Um, but like I say, I'm really happy with with what I've been able to accomplish. So um, what I'm planning on doing is I am planning on uh, pulling out Autumn Magic. I'm going to work on Autumn Magic tonight. And, and I'm going to work on Autumn Magic maybe till the beginning of December. And then I am not sure uh, what I'm going to do. Um, I am, I am really seriously considering um, starting something. Uh, I feel the need to have a piece that is real Christmas. I mean, this winter sampler is nice. It's kind of Christmas, but I've stitched all the Christmas stuff. And, and I'm getting up into Valentine's Day, and um, so it doesn't really feel like Christmas. It just feels like white snow and winter. And I, I feel a need to have something a little bit more Christmassy. But I am having a hard time deciding what I really want to start. Um, so just because 
I have a lot of a lot of Christmas stuff that I want to start and I just can't decide. And I'm not going to start 10 things because that'll just uh, that just doesn't work for me. So, I have to decide one thing and I I don't know I may decide not to do anything, but I thought I'd ask your opinion. So, I'm going to show you some things that that I have that I that I'm thinking about starting and see um, I'll take your input as to which one you think I should start. Maybe maybe that'll help me. Maybe it'll confuse me even more. But let's let's do this. So I don't have I haven't had time to pull actually pull my charts, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna insert pictures of what I have so that you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, the first piece that I'm thinking about starting is uh, Quaker Christmas Two. Uh, Dina half stitch cross stitch has been working on has started this. And I've I've had this for like a couple of years, and it looks, and and seeing her start it makes me want to start it. So that that's the that's the first piece that I'm kind of considering. Hers just looks wonderful and makes me makes me want to do it. Um, I I've been stitching a lot of motifs though, and this is another another piece that's motifs and. I'm kind of feeling a desire to do something differently, so that's why I'm not really concerned. That's, that's the con for that one. Another piece that I'm thinking about starting, I'm thinking about uh, starting the Hontan Holiday Series by Little House Needleworks. Um, I'm OCD enough that I would probably start with the first one, which was is Our House. So I'm thinking about starting that. Uh, that would be kind of nice because it would be small. I could, I think I could finish it uh, in a couple of weeks maybe. And so it wouldn't really add to the number of uh, pieces that I have unfinished. And it would just be a, a really quick stitch. Who knows, maybe I could do a couple of them. So that's another possibility. Um, another thing that I'm starting about, thinking about is uh, Spirit of Christmas by Lavender and Lace. Uh, this Santa, I really love this Santa, and I've seen uh, uh, Stephanie Misoso Crafty who who stitched this, and I've seen a couple of other people stitching it on Instagram, and I just love the shading with this one, and so that that's kind of a possibility. Another one would be um, Winter White Santa by Mirabilia. I really like this one as well. Um, I have all this stuff to, to do that one, and I don't know that I really like that one as well, and it'd, I think it'd be fun to stitch. Another one that I'd like to stitch, this is more of a full coverage piece. It is called uh, Rocky Mountain Christmas. It's, a, a, it's actually a house, it's a, and, and it's an actual house. It's the Maxwell Mansion that is in Golden, Colorado. This is a cross stitch adaptation of a, a watercolor that was painted by Marty Bell. And I haven't seen anybody uh, stitching um, Marty Bell designs. There's a whole bunch of her, of her design, of her paintings that have been adapted by cross stitch, uh, adapted into cross stitch. And I have, I have four or five of her of these um, there. And I have a couple of English cottages. And I have this one that's, it's it's like a house that's a Christmas, and I every once in a while I think I ought to start something like this. So that that's another possibility. Um, the thought of having another great big huge full coverage piece though is kind of kind of scary. Well, not scary, but it'd just be uh, taking on another great big project, which I know that's never stopped me before. But um, so there are those five possibilities. Um, so if you want to, if you want to comment below and tell me which one you think I should start, I'd be, I'd be interested to hear what you, what you say. Um, maybe, maybe you can push me one way or another. Um, we'll see. At any rate, um, I hope that you have a great, a uh, great month. Um, if you're in the United States, Thanksgiving is next week. I hope that you have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, we are going, I am excited for Thanksgiving. Uh, we have a tradition that I'll share with you. Uh, our family does pie night. Uh, and the, the rationale behind pie night 
is that you um, is that after you eat Thanksgiving dinner, there's not a lot of room for pie, and you can't really enjoy pie. And who doesn't love pie? So we on mon the Monday before Thanksgiving, uh, we have pie night where we eat pie. And we, we invite uh, some of our extended family. We have, we have cousins that live in the area. And we invite, invite everybody over here. Uh, we make, uh, my wife makes two or three pies. And we have, everybody who comes has to bring at least one pie. And I make a cheesecake. <laughs> I'm trying to decide what kind of cheesecake I'm gonna make this year. Uh, I make a cheesecake and we, uh, we pig out on pie. And it's really fun and not very healthy, but uh, but that's that is our our tradition. I'm looking forward to pie night. I have to make my cheesecake tonight uh, because I'm not going to have time tomorrow. So um, I have to decide which one I'm going to make. Um, at any rate, I hope that you have a great Thanksgiving. That you enjoy any uh, Thanksgiving tra traditions that you have. Um, if you have a tradition that you'd like to share with me, feel free and comment below and tell me what's your favorite Thanksgiving tradition. Uh, at any rate, I hope that you have a great month. Um, and as always, feel free to comment, uh, like, subscribe my videos. I'm always glad to hear from you. Have a great month and we will talk to you later. Goodbye.